The title is Speed Boat Innovation. What does it mean? Uh, in large organizations, well-established organizations, they have their own core business, right? And on top of that, in order to bring the next level of experiences to their users and consumers or customers, they wanted to innovate fast through a very short life cycle of delivering digital products. What does it mean? Car producers, manufacturers, besides of producing cars, they want to offer the ultimate driving experience beyond the car itself. Banking, uh, uh, banking entities, bankers, they are looking to the data inside to offer the beyond just the conventional banking products, and so on and so forth. But you know what? In order to achieve speed and help you to continuously validating your business value, user experience, and beyond the speed, you have to have really the organizational alignment. So the challenge lies on multiple angles. And the first thing that we've encountered as a challenge is different organizations, different departments within the organization, they have their own priorities. Well, me, uh, in the role as a CTO and many companies, the challenge is the disruption of the business in, impacted by technology, right? Picking up the program languages like JavaScript, it changes every other thing six months. How you can cope with your innovation by choose the right technology at the right time, right? And yet, IT sees the other way. They feel whenever you talk about innovation, you are not connected with IT, right? Because you want to speed, you want to bypass the processes, as the same view as the security compliance says, these guys are really, really playing the side game by sacrificing names of speed, right? A lot of rules of engagement were not followed. Policies were not applied. And if you are marketing directors, you see it's another way around, right? It's not innovating fast enough in order to really capture the great opportunity in the market. So, as you can see, any organization will be experiencing many customers that encounter such a challenge. And that's on the business organizational level. Second thing is the very interesting concept, right? And repetitively called the MVP, minimal viable product. A lot of companies, a lot of entities, a lot of sub-entities within our organization has their own interpretation. Some of them looking on the left side, prototype will be enough for them to innovate. While others, they call MVP as a fully fledged product, right? With all kinds of features, they even don't know whether the market would like it, whether the consumer would buy it. And it's extremely hard to define what is the scope of the Middleton that as the real MVP, delivering the most important business value, user experience in the short time frame so that you can continuously validate. That's the definition of MVP. So that's a second challenge, right? And to make it even more complicated, often any organization, the priority is decided by business, right? Because that generates revenue, that brings attraction to the market, that defines the objective of the organization. But what they see is the tip of the iceberg. But what makes the whole process complex is what happens underneath. And it's not just IT challenge, right? But today, within this context, within the context of this presentation, I would like to focus on a couple of areas which we highlighted in red. That is the so-called interpretation of IT security Compliancy is slowing us down, which is not the truth, but let's deep dive into it. And when companies really pay attention to craft out the plan to innovate while coping with IT challenges and the compliance challenges, as the first suggestion or recommendation is never reinvent the wheel, right? And when we talk about nowadays innovation, we leverage the power of cloud, or in case of the cloud provider Amazon, right? And, and solid 
well-established cloud providers like Amazon, they have already rolled out right, well-defined end-to-end framework allows you to solve all those struggles underneath. Now, the point is, you may ask, well, looking at the infinite list, I will not be able to solve it unless I spend the next two years just focusing on enabling all these aspects, vertically speaking. That is what we call non-functional requirements, which in the eye of a business has no value. right? So it becomes hard for you to capture the priorities in terms of investment. Our suggestion is looking at it the same way as you deliver MVP. Choose what fit for purpose, right? And it does not mean what highlighted is what only necessary to enable. But that is what we craft out based on the experience over the past years of delivering large scale digital innovation framework for customers. So you need to look into the aspects which covers commonality, which deliver the enablement for multiple innovations on top so that you can reuse. And I'm not talking about features. I'm talking about all those invisible areas, how you protect your data, how you give your access to your users and developers, how you quickly roll out to your production and then roll back if you want to validate, and how you keep compliant in terms of logging and audit. So I listed out a couple of components and as well as how you speed up your processes, right? Amazon Cloud Adoption Framework does not only stop that, it also gives you a great insight of what services you can enable, right? It's different categories in order to enable the compliance security so that you can leverage the commonality, the, goal, the groundwork that you do it once, that you can enable as many digital propositions on top. Right? Because MVP is not just front end. Right? There's a business logic behind it. That data flowing in and out. You need to keep in mind, it's not a building app only. It's not a chatbot only. It's not a website. It's an end-to-end -end solution delivery. Now, you've chosen the framework you adopt for, and it's not just only the framework adoption. You have to establish the discipline within your organization. Right? And how to do that? First thing first, landing zone. That's very important. The foundational layer which gives you consistent access control, monitoring, auditing. And also give you the clear view where do you stand your enablement of innovation by leveraging the power of Amazon Web Services. Well, you can preserve privacy and control per environment as you deliver. So five principle is what we recommend by an enabling combination of the toolings as Amazon offers, like you know, control tower to set up your organizational account right. Now you have access control. Second challenge is how you automate everything without touching your environment, including the first line of code that you commit to your code repository. It's nothing new. CI CD pipeline. Everyone will say that's obvious. But the question is how far, how deeply are you applying the right principles to enable your CI CD pipeline? Are you really, really applying this end to end from your day one? And how you ensure security scanning? How you ensure privacy? How you ensure the overall running environment is supporting your faster validation in terms of MVP? That's the key, right? You cannot say, oh, tomorrow we'll fix that because today it just allows the business team to manually touch your environment. From that moment, you are breaking the chain, right? So we've been doing and applying on this type of logics and principles in large-scale corporates. Uh, myself coming from Amsterdam team, so one of the examples is Tier 1 Dutch Bank. Over the last five years, we've been involving and enabling their digital innovation factory. And as a result of applying the right principles in governance layer and attaching closely with the needs and requirements of your IT, security, and compliance, actually, we help them to accelerate faster. It's not decelerating, right? 
25 propositions got launched over the last three years. Currently, we are in parallel running three large solutions digital propositions, which is going beyond the MVP scope. And as we measured the typical average speed of going live of every single MVP varies from three to max five months. And most importantly, what they have been struggling to really speed up the compliance is the pen test evolution. We've improved the speed from six months to six weeks, all thanks to the foundational layer aligned up here. So what are the key learnings? I'm looking at the numbers, so I have three minutes to go. Um, first thing first, as the speed define, defines the needs, you should never detach your speedboat from your mothership. What does it mean? You should never create your own isolated cloud environment without involving IT and the compliance. Yes, it's costly, but choose for the purpose will define your fine-grained controlled investment and the time to set what is right. Second thing is really plan small iterations. Don't kind of do big bang in one shot without involving business or enabling business ideas. Well, while you are creating your MVPs, gradually adding all these aspects which are related to the ground truth that you should enable. And lastly and not least, automate everything from day one. Right? It's not that hard. If you are writing code, don't let any manual intervention happen in your foundational layer. That's very crucial so that you can set the principle right from day one. Yes, it is a bit costly, but that's the necessary cost before you go scale. Right? Um, I've listed here two um, additional information. You can scan the QR code, and I hope the slide deck will be shared later on. And we have two booths here, one over there, uh, number 1352, and we have a small booth over the AIAL. And now, oh, well, my colleague is pointing over there. <laughs> and I have another one, uh, 2742. So we will be there for the whole week, and I'm more than happy to discuss answering questions about uh, uh, and discuss in detail if you have any specific case to explore together. So that's what I'll prepare today. And thank you all.